Hello, and welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. As you can see, my shelves are pretty empty right now behind me because I pulled out all of the LGBT books I have on my shelves to recommend to you today. I'm here to share with you 50 lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer books for you to also indulge in, read, and enjoy. I made a young adult version of this video back in like March of 2020, so I wanted to create an updated version of this list, an updated version of this video, because I've read so many more books since then that have had queer and trans and gay main characters and perspectives that have been really enlightening and wonderful for me to read about. So I'm just going to share some of my favorites with you. I'm going to break it down by adult books, young adult books, and a couple of graphic novels at the end. Also, in this video, I am prioritizing Black, Indigenous, and people of color authors because I feel like a lot of these lists and the list even that I made back in March was pretty white in general and I obviously don't want to be part of contributing to how white like the publishing industry is. You'll notice that maybe like the large majority of these uh, books that I'm recommending are written by authors of color um, or feature characters of color. Um, this is part of my long-term agenda to make people read more BIPOC, queer, LGBT, books. So let's start with our adult novels. The first book I have here is The Death of Vivek Oji by Kwiki Mezi. This book follows the aftermath and the precursor to the events that lead to Vivek Oji's death. Um, this is set in Nigeria and we're following a bunch of these characters and family members and friends and our main character grapples a lot with his gender identity and sexuality, especially within the context of his location and his setting and the cultural setting around him, as well as the people that he grew up with and the community issues that come up when someone is figuring out their identity. And this book is really sad and tragic at some points, but it's also so beautifully written and so gorgeously rendered. Kwaki Mezi is a wonderful writer. I love their books. And the main character in the story is queer and trans, and um, so are other characters in this book. And the author is non-binary and also from Nigeria. So I guess it would be own voices, as one would say. Yeah, I really recommend this book, and I think that if you enjoy literary fiction, family dramas, historical fiction, that kind of vibe, you would really enjoy this book. The next book I have on this list is The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. This is a story following two gay young men on a plantation in Mississippi, and we're following their queer relationship as well as the relationships and the characters around them, the slave owners and the plantation owners, um, as well as other enslaved people on the plantation, and the community dynamics that go on, as well as the influence of religion and culture and magic and mythology. This is obviously historical fiction. It's set in the 19th century in the deep south of America in the height in, of the brutality of American slavery, and we we explore that really deeply, but because this book is titled The Prophets, there's also a ongoing through line in which each of the different chapters are kind of named after the first books in the Bible in chronological order, like Genesis, Exodus, etc, etc. And that theme of biblical storytelling as well as just religious storytelling in general is really beautifully and masterfully woven through this entire book and I think that this book explores obviously love and sexuality and race and enslavement and freedom and all of these different themes really well similar to I think the writing and vibes of like Toni Morrison. I think even in the dedication page of this book the author dedicates this book to James Baldwin and Toni Morrison I believe and I think that this book is a beautiful beautiful rendering of a narrative that we don't really hear that much of um, that, that we don't really hear often and explores history, trauma, grief, 
and the pain and torture and terror of enslavement. The next book I have on here is a pretty light-hearted book, at least compared to the first two that I mentioned, and that is We Write Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. I know that people have been talking about this book a little bit, so have I, um, but we haven't really been talking about the queer and trans uh, narratives in this book, which there are quite a few, and I think that because this book doesn't necessarily have any one particular main character, but instead focuses on the entirety of a field hockey team and the witchcraft and the things that they do to try to win the state championship and the aftermath of that, as well as the setting being within the 80s. And then we, we are seeing kind of them as adults, you know, 20 years later in uh, modern day life, I suppose. Um, we see these different characters in high school who are figuring out like their gender identity, their sexuality, and and their parents figuring out stuff like that too. And I think this book did explore these topics of gender and sexuality and race and like the suburbs and being on a sports team and teenage girlhood in this really, really fantastic way that was so humorous and lighthearted, but also very poignant almost. And I think that more people should talk about the queer and trans elements of the story because they are they are quite important to the plot and the character development, I think, and it was really wonderful. I can't recommend this book enough. The author is also a black woman. I don't know if she identifies as queer or LGBT, but that doesn't really matter, I don't think, because one doesn't have to be out to write good stories. I love this book and you should read it. If you're looking for a queer book that also incorporates some of those other elements that I was talking about. The next book I have on this list is Nama by Sarah Blake. I have a full video review about this book linked in the cards and this book is a retelling of the story of Noah's Ark but from the perspective of his wife who is in the Bible or the Torah um, unnamed and her name in this book is obviously Nama and she has uh, queer relationships throughout this novel and we see this plays out in a really beautiful and magical way and I think that there are also like some smut scenes in here. Um, this is a really good kind of sapphic historical retelling mythological feeling book that more people should definitely pick up. I picked this up because Jesse from Bowties and Books really enjoyed this I think and they mentioned it in one of their videos and I had to check it out and I really enjoyed it. The author of this book I don't know if she's out as queer or lesbian or whatever but I think she is Jewish. This book is a really good representation not just for like those identities but also of just a retelling of a story that that is so culturally mythologized and canonized but you know this is kind of like a queer twist on that the next book i have here is her body and other parties by carmen maria machado this book is a short story collection and it includes a bunch of different queer and gay and lesbian and bisexual stories in here that incorporate elements of magic, elements of horror, elements of fairy tale. It's really beautiful and all the stories in here have something kind of dark but gorgeous and beautiful to them. I really enjoy this book and the author of this is a Latinx bisexual author I believe and so you should check it out. <laughs> the next book I have on this list is also by Carmen Maria Machado, and that is In the Dream House, which is a memoir about an abusive queer relationship and how the author's experience with that kind of shaped her and how she got into the situation and why she felt trapped in it and all the different feelings and the tragedy that comes with that and there is a extended kind of metaphor in which each of the different chapters can be different writing styles and formats and there's also that motif of the dream house and the idea of this perfect you know like in your dream your your dream house and that dream relationship and how 
things don't turn out the way you want them to and how tragic that can be and how that experience is very scarring and um, emotionally impactful and this book was really really wonderfully written just as her other book was so I definitely recommend picking this one up too as well. The next book I have on this list is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max, I'm forgetting the last name of the other author, but this is a lesbian love story set during a time war in which these different agents, red and blue, travel uh, time and can influence different timelines and they work with different agencies that are fighting each other. And so it's kind of like an enemies to lovers situation in which they write notes to each other and that's how they fall in love. And it's very dreamy. The writing is very flowery, but like it's still such a beautiful love story and it's a short book and I think that the way that these two characters express their love for each other, the sci-fi element that exists in the background of this setting was so wonderful. I enjoyed this book a lot and I know a lot of other people did too so check this book out if you want to see two ladies who are space agents fall in love with each other via epistolary messages. The next book I have here is The Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. This is a really short book. It's a novella. It's inspired by wuxia stories, which is kind of like Chinese mythology, uh, folklore type stuff. And one of our main characters in this book, I believe is trans. There are queer and trans elements to this book. And even though it's like folklore inspired and there's magic elements to it, and it's kind of quirky in that way, it's like really funny at some points. And the way that the author kind of implements the elements of like queerness and the exploration of like gender and sexuality and stuff throughout this book is, not too heavy-handed at all. It's kind of not really focused on necessarily, but it's still an important part of the book. What this book is basically about is there's this group of bandits and there is the Order of the Pure Moon and there's this woman who is a young votary for the Order uh, kind of stumbles upon them and they have to go on this little like mission situation and uh, we are kind of in the jungles of like Southeast Asia and it's really magical, fun, and just a really sweet adventure story with queer and trans elements to the storytelling. I cannot recommend this book enough. The next book I have on this list is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Basherdust. The author of this book I believe is Iranian. This book is a retelling of the Ice Queen kind of story, the idea that there is a queen with a heart made of ice and this story follows that queen in a kind of non-linear storyline and her stepdaughter and their mother-daughter relationship that is kind of unconventional in, ter in terms of fairy tales because typically the stepmother and the stepdaughter are, like don't get along but these two really have a um a very solid relationship and this book is just an icy fairy tale to the fullest extent and it's so gorgeous and there's a sapphic storyline it's kind of like acquaintances to enemies to lovers situation it's it's really really good um basically we're following this our our other main character is this girl the stepdaughter right and she stumbles upon this new doctor who works for the castle because she's the princess and this doctor is this young woman and they have a little bit of a love story throughout this narrative and this book was just so wonderful and so dark in a way that only fairy tale retellings can be I think. I adored this book so much and if you want a really beautiful sapphic romance fairy tale fantasy you have to check this book out the next book i have on this list is the first sister by lyndon a lewis this is a space opera fantasy and some of the main characters are sapphic because we are dealing with a nun on this ship um and these nuns don't have the ability to speak um as part of their kind of religion and they are deeply oppressed and they are used as basically prostitutes forcibly like 
for the soldiers on this spaceship and there is a new spaceship captain coming in who's this like buff lady the one of the main characters is one of the sisters who's aspiring to be the first sister and she is trying to get into the good graces of this captain we're also following another storyline with this man who is in love with his non-binary friend whom deserted the military a while back and he's trying to figure out where his friend and lover is this book was really really dark and fast-paced and fantastical and those sci-fi elements were really wonderful i think the space opera-ness of this book was just so fantastic and i really recommend this book if you're looking for some gay sapphic non-binary trans storylines set in space the next book i have on this list is a trilogy and that is the broken earth trilogy by nk jemison everyone also talks about this book on on booktube um, or these books the series but I also don't think we necessarily talk enough about how queer and trans it is because it is so gay and so uh, trans there are so many different characters who are not cis who are not het and it is wonderful and glorious this book follows in post-apocalyptic world and there's a huge sci-fi element in which the world goes through these fifth seasons you know there's four seasons but now there's a fifth season in which chaos reigns and there's just terror everywhere because there's uncontrollable earthquakes and natural disasters and then there are people who can control the or earth called origins and a lot of time as children they have extreme amounts of power that they can't control and so people have a deep fear of them and hate them we're following this main character who comes home to see that her husband has murdered her child and ran off with her daughter and she's trying to find this man to get her daughter back and kill him so that's kind of the premise of this trilogy and it is so wonderfully played out and the queer and trans storylines in this are both subtly put in there and uh, also really important parts of the story i cannot recommend this trilogy enough it is just the peak the height of fantasy science fiction obviously all of these books have won the Hugo Award, each single one of them, and N.K. Jemisin is an absolute genius. The next book I have here is Docile by Cam Spara, and this is another sci-fi story, and we're following a character who exists in a world in which people can sell off their debt by becoming enslaved as dociles, basically becoming the personal servants and sex toys oftentimes of these really rich people who hire out dociles and most people who become dociles go on this drug called docilin in which your free will is essentially wiped from you and your memory is wiped from you but our main character in this book elisha elisha's mom went on docilin when she served out like a 10-year term to sell off a bunch of debt um because this is kind of set in the future in this hyper capitalist world World in which the world has devolved to the point where like, the average person has just millions of dollars of debt from like school um, and everything and like trying to live and now it's most people live in abject poverty and thus have to work as dociles. It's a dystopian novel in that way but the sci-fi elements can be explained with the docilin and also the other structure of the world but basically we're following Elisha as he refuses to take docilin. His reasoning is that his mother went on docilin and that completely wiped her brain and, and changed her she no longer is herself she kind of is just an empty shell of a person and he knows that it is because of docilin even though the company developers of docilin deny any long-term impact of the drug so then elisha ends up working for and being the docile for alex who is the son of the ceo of the company that produces docilin so they develop this really 
really, really horrifying, grooming, abusive relationship in which because Alex, the CEO's son, needs to kind of demonstrate his ability to control his docile as a way of him being able to move up in the company rank and file and to effectively show off the fact that he's going to be a wonderful big boy boss CEO, he has to break in his docile Elisha. This creates in obviously a huge power imbalance and because Elisha isn't on docilin, the brainwashing and the servitude that he then has to portray to Alex has to be manipulated out of him. And this story is so tragic because we see as Elisha is just groomed into someone where he doesn't even remember who he was before meeting Alex. And we see as Alex realizes the corruption of his position of power and the company and how blind he has been to the existence of class oppression and how he's profited from it in a really, really extreme sort of way and how he has abused his power. And Elisha in this book also gets involved with a dissident group that is trying to overthrow the ruling class of this world. And the tagline of this book is there's no consent under capitalism. And I think that this book really explores that in a really, really fascinating way, as well as the issues of abuse in relationships and power dynamics within relationships in a really fantastic way. But of course, know that there are definitely sexual assault scenes and unconsensual shit that goes on in here because obviously that is what this book is thematically dealing with at the end of the day. I think you need to have an element of intellectual maturity to kind of get into this because uh, I think people will obviously understand this as like a taboo romance or whatever, but I really think that this book is much more than that and I really need to do a book review of this after I reread it and annotate it and kind of explain the different aspects of this book that I just absolutely adore. I think this book explores like gay and queer identity and the abuse of power and stuff that can come with that because in this hyper capitalist reality being gay isn't like a big deal like all the rich people are pretty sexuality fluid <laughs> and it doesn't really matter because they're all like super rich and they have all the power anyways and so that's not really seen as a major deal like most rich people can have whatever gender of docile they want and many of them have multiple that alternate reality that dystopian reality is explored very wonderfully and in a really interesting way Ugh, i've been talking for so long gotta drink my Irish black tea. So the next book I have on this list is The Monster of Ellenhaven by Jennifer Geisbrecht. This is kind of a gay Frankenstein <laughs> sort of situation in which we are set in this really dark and grim world and there is this accountant whom everyone goes to and he's kind of seen as like the town weirdo. Um, he's very kept to himself and very clean and prim and proper and there is this monster of Ellen Taven who then becomes his like sidekick slash um, romantic interest and they have some elements of like sexual tension and banter but there is a greater plot at hand that includes this grim dark sci-fi fantasy world and it's a pretty short book and I really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought that it was pretty funny and even though it was like dark and setting. It was pretty lighthearted as a story and elements of the story, I believe. And I really enjoyed the dynamic of the two main characters. Next book I have on this list is Less by Andrew Sean Greer. This is a contemporary story following a gay man who is a writer who is somewhat acclaimed, but not like super big. And the aftermath of this relationship that fell apart. And now he's going on this worldwide adventure, going to a bunch of different countries and just trying to figure out himself and his life and his relationships. Hitting his midlife crisis, he's gonna turn, I think, like 50 or something, and he is just having a rough time of it. This book was really heartwarming and sweet and poignant and also funny in a lot of ways. I think that this book explores being like a gay man and hitting your midlife crisis and just being a person and not knowing what the hell is going on in your life and feeling 
mediocre at best and you know not feeling like you're doing much with your life and this book was just really reassuring and warm and lovely and i really enjoyed this book next up i have real life by brandon taylor this book explores a queer black man and his existence at a graduate program at this midwestern university and the kind of microaggressions and racism that he experiences and the complicated friendship group graduate student group dynamics that go on and his weird relationship with one of the other people in this graduate program and him and this guy's kind of hook up relationship friendship situation. This book is a contemporary and it deals with a lot of issues of like friendship and interpersonal relationships and the awkwardness of real life. This is a really solid book if you're looking for something contemporary, something that might make you think, that might make you cry, um, and I really enjoyed this one. The next book I have on this list is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This book I think I've seen a little bit on book two but people don't really talk about I think the queerness of it because it is a bisexual love triangle situation we're following an Irish woman who moves to Hong Kong to teach kids English and she gets involved with this really rich British dude who uh, lives and works there and then later she gets involved with this Chinese woman who lives there and uh, there's like just a weird dynamic going on here our main character is not that likable a little bit of a pessimist <laughs> This book, I think, deals a lot with the realism of relationships and the gravity of those and our main character fucks up a lot and she's just, you know, your typical, like, millennial who doesn't know what she wants from her life, basically. And this book has been compared to the writing of, like, Sally Rooney and I do see the similarities and I think that if you do like Sally Rooney, you should check out this bisexual love triangle book. Speaking of Sally Rooney, I have to re recommend Conversations with Friends, which also has a kind of queer relationship in this book in which the main character is a woman who is kind of in a friend like a really close friendship slash romantic relationship with her best friend from high school but then they meet this artist actor duo and her best friend gets kind of enthralled with the artist woman and she becomes enthralled with the actor man and it's about how this how these relationships and the intricacies of their lives being interwoven together play out and i think that it was done really well and explores uh, not necessarily like queer identity uh but kind of how these like gay women navigate the world and their relationships to men and to other women i think that it's really poignant and smart and interesting the next book i have on this list is just a straight romance and that is lady's guide to celestial mechanics by olivia Waite. this is a lesbian romance that is actually really good really good smut i think it's kind of a victorian set romance like ye olden times or whatever and there's this lady who is kind of visiting this other lady's home and one of them is like super into astronomy or whatever and I don't know it's just a fun short romance book and if you like that whole sapphic regency period piece vibe you should check this book out the next book i have on this list is written in the stars by alexandria bellafleur i think i've talked about this in earlier videos and even though i wasn't the biggest fan of this book i still think it's a pretty solid lesbian romance between a bisexual main character and i think a lesbian woman and one of them is like a super like prim and proper lawyer type or I think she's an accountant and the other is someone who is an app developer for this astrology app and she's super romantic. It's about these two women falling for each other even though they don't necessarily hit it off at first. They definitely have like sexual tension and chemistry there. It's a fun romance. It's a fun light romance and you should check it out if you're looking for a fun light romance kind of in the lines of like Talia Hibbert but not as good writing wise as Talia Hibbert but like 
it's kind of similar vibes, I think. The next book I have on this list is Fortune Favors the Dead, which was along with a, a lot of other books on the list on my favorite books of 2020 list, which I'll link in the cards. And this book follows a bisexual main character. We're in her first person point of view and she becomes the kind of assistant to a detective woman lady. They're solving this case and within the solving of this case, the main character, this lady right here, falls for one of the daughters of the like murdered dude or whatever and it's just a really fun like early 20th century detective story with lots of queer elements in here and lots of different gay storylines that also explore what it's like to be gay in uh, like the 40s in New York City. I think this book is so 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 good. The mystery was so beautiful and wonderful and amazing. The relationships were just so uh, classic and phenomenal like the detective duo phenomenon like just so wonderful and amazing the romance oh so good i just adore this book so much and i need more people to read this because the mystery element the sapphic elements are things that i think people like on booktube and people who like reading mysteries need to get into this the sun is setting even though it's literally like not even 3 p.m yet <laughs> So I had to adjust the lighting. Uh, sorry if it looks a bit off or something is changed a little bit, but anyway, I hope you don't mind. The next book I have on this list is How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. This is a short story collection with a bunch of different sci-fi, fantasy, historical fiction stories that have lots of different queer elements in there. One story in particular has a lesbian romance and it features in kind of alternate history New Orleans Haitian Revolution situation that I think is amazing and wonderful and I still think about it sometimes. So yeah, please read this short story collection if you're looking for some black, queer, lesbian, wonderful storytelling. The next book I have here is Fierce Femmes and Notorious Liars by Kai Cheng Tom. This book is a magical memoir and we are following this main character who is an Asian trans woman and her experiences kind of working the streets but also getting in this trans girl gang situation and it is just a beautiful magical story with some lesbian love, with some trans love and um, a magically infused memoir that makes the experience of being a trans woman and the community that one finds uh, feel almost mythological, almost fable-like. Very, very beautiful. I cried while reading this book. I thought that it was so wonderful and the cover is just gorgeous. I love this book so much and if you're looking for a book about a trans woman of color written by a trans woman of color, you need to read this book. It is so good. The next book I have on this list is A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. This is written by an indigenous First Nations uh, two-spirit person, I believe, uh, who is also gay and he talks about his experiences being a queer indigenous person and his experiences on like a sexual level, his sexual experiences and the racism that he's faced growing up. And this book is just part theory, part memoir. It is heartbreaking and really intelligent and it's such a it's a, such a good book. So definitely read this book if any of that sounds interesting to you. The next book I have on this list is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And this was also on my top 20 20 books of 2020 video slash list. This book follows a bunch of different black women and black people and people who um, are related to those people in England. And we are kind of seeing all these characters and how their lives intertwine and how they come to be who they are and their histories and their pasts. And uh, there are so many different queer and trans and gay and lesbian and bisexual characters in here. And Bernadine Evaristo just writes them so gorgeously, renders these stories so human. These people feel so realistic. They feel like people I could meet. The narratives and the lives that they experience are just so wild and 
so well written and just captured in this wonderful amazing way cannot recommend this book enough if you're looking for some lesbian stuff featuring black lesbians some black women who later on in their life figure out their queerness there's so many different stories in here that are just so so good and you need to read it the next book I have on this list is The Subtweet by Vivek Shreya. This book is written by an Indian trans woman, I believe, and it follows these women who I believe one of them is trans, I think, or maybe both of them. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But the subtweet is about a subtweet that one of these indie music artists make towards this other artist who covers her song and it that the cover blows up but not the original song and kind of these two women's relationship with each other that unfolds in an interesting way and it talks a lot about like the underground indie music scene and the racism there as well as kind of the marginalization you feel as an artist or creator and being a woman of color and i think that this book is really really good and i really enjoyed it it's pretty short too it's a contemporary kind of general adult fiction you should check it out the next book i have on this list is the deep by river solomon this book is about mermaid creatures who only exist because they are the descendants of um, pregnant enslaved people and they have learned and adapted to the water and the ocean. There is a sapphic lesbian love story in this book and so many people have talked about it so I don't want to explain more about it but the author of this book is also black and non-binary and this book is just so wonderful and it's short it's really short but it explores the ideas of trauma and collective history and memory and community in this really gorgeous way. The next book I have on this list is The House in the Julian Sea by TJ Klune. Everyone's been talking about this book for good reason. This is a good ass book. This feels like a Pixar movie but gay. Uh, and there's magical kids, there's a bureaucracy that sucks, there is a man who is just you know, a normal last dude just living his little life being one of the uh, paper pushers in this bureaucracy and then he meets this quirky kind of, of unexpected man who runs a home for these magical children and they form this really cute, adorable relationship. Uh, this is about found family, this is about community, this is about acceptance and being who you are and how uh, communities that are perceived as different are ostracized and it's just so so good and it's so cute and wonderful and magical and you have to read this book. The last book I have on my adult LGBTQ books is Kissing the Witch by Emma Donahue. This is a collection of fairy tale retellings. This is like a classic queer lit book. Uh, we are following some different lesbian queer twists on some classic stories and some really dark twists on some classic stories and I think that this is a really really good book if you are interested in some sapphic fairy tale retelling stuff uh, which I always am. So yeah, check this out if that sounds interesting to you. So, moving on to my young adult books list. First, I'm going to talk about Anger is a Gift by Mark Oshiro. This is about a boy whose family has dealt with police brutality in the past, and it's set in Oakland, I believe, and this main character is a gay black teen, and I believe this is an own voices story as well. He develops his relationship with another boy, and there is another tragedy in the community, and this book just deals with police brutality, and racism and institutional racism and educational systems being racist and all of the anger that comes with that and the trauma and the grief and the terror that comes with those experiences and how that impacts young people's lives as well as interweaving the reality of our main character being a gay person in just a really beautiful and heart-wrenching way. This story is just so 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 good, necessary, and 
sad it's really sad and and terrifying but you know it i think it is just a wonderful kind of rendering and reflection of the reality of how horrible so many institutions are to young uh, people of color specifically black men and um over policed schools full of mostly black children and kind of the disparities that we see within these educational systems of people who kids who go to you know more privileged schools versus kids who go to less privileged schools i think that this book just deals with a lot of themes of you know grief and racism and family and in this really tender way if you like angie thomas's books or like nick stone's books you should definitely pick this book up i've heard nothing but good things from other people who've read this book as well and it's just it's so wonderful i really enjoyed this read the next book on this list is the henna wars by diba jagger and this is about an Afro-Brazilian girl and I think a Bangladeshi girl. It's, it's in Ireland and it's these high school girls who are competing with their businesses of henna and I think it's just a really cute sweet sapphic love story that also has to do with like competition and also deals with like family and you know coming out and how hard that can be for kids of immigrants and uh, you know girls of color and those experiences being ostracized at home and also at, at school due to racism and homophobia and I think that this book deals with those things really really well and really beautifully and I think that more middle grade and young adult readers should check this book out if you're looking for a cute but also realistic and heartbreaking sapphic lesbian read. The next book I have here is The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. This is a book that explores addiction, trauma, family in this really beautiful way that also features a main character who's a teenage girl and who's bisexual and kind of acting out in a bunch of different ways. Deals with a lot of themes uh, that a lot of young adults have to grapple with in a really gorgeous way that also is set in kind of like a main summer setting that is also just you know really present in the story and it's just such a good book and I think that more young adults who are looking for um, some queer love in the midst of like a hard-hitting way contemporary should pick this up. The next one I have on this list is Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. This features another bisexual female teenage main character. She goes to a boarding school in Scotland and her roommate is literally a princess and it's a hate to love story between this princess and this girl. It's really cute and it's adorable and I think that if you want a cute lesbian love story featuring a stuck up kind of snooty type and all American girl <laughs> who's just been tossed into the setting of a boarding school, you should check this book out. I think it's really cute and it's just a solid young adult romance. The next book I have here is The Falling in Love Montage by Ciara Smith. This is about these two girls who are kind of doing a summer romance uh, project in which they meet at a party. This is set in Ireland, I believe, too. And uh, these two girls meet at a party and they just do all these cute romantic dates based off of romance movies because our main character is super anti-romance <laughs> because her mother has dementia and she knows that because it's a genetic disease, she is probably going to also have dementia. So what is the point of falling in love? What is the point of experiencing life to the fullest extent? if she won't even remember it and be able to share it because she deals with a lot of hurt and trauma because her mother kind of lives in a home for people with dementia and when this main character sees her and her mother doesn't remember her like it just hurts her so much. The relationship between her the main character and her father is also really tender and and wonderfully explored because this dad is kind of you know it's been years since the relationship has ended with his wife and 
and so he's kind of seeing other people and our main character is not happy with that and this book is just about a girl who like kind of has to figure out how to open herself up and there's like cute little romantic stuff that just happens throughout as well as the hard-hitting family dynamics that go on in this book because of obviously the nature of the themes that it explores so i think that if you're looking for a hard-hitting YA contemporary with a lesbian romance in it you gotta check this one out the next books i have here are also books that i talked about in my favorites of 2020 video and that is the we set the dark on fire duology this is we set the dark on fire and this is is we unleash the merciless storm this is written by taylor k mejia who is a latinx author and this book is set in a fantasy world based on latin american settings and culture and we're following this girl who is an undocumented person and she is snuck into this really prestigious academy because in this world there are academies for girls in which you can be trained to be a segunda or a primera and that's because every powerful man in this kind of kingdom slash nation slash country slash island has two wives the first wife and the second wife the first wife the primera is a wife who has to kind of be in charge of everything and be really really solid and unshakable unflappable and really really solid with like planning and uh, strategizing and precision the second wife is someone who's like aesthetic and supposed to like bear the children and you know be just the kind like wife wife or whatever and so we're following the this girl who is training to become a primera and she's secretly undocumented she has fake documents and on the day of her graduation in which she is going to be assigned whom she's going to be the primera for there's kind of like new security procedures at their school in which they are going to be like double checking everybody's identities to make sure everyone is like not undocumented and so then this girl gets blackmailed into working for this organization this rebel organization we're going to give you these papers that are more legit than the ones you have now if only you work for us and so she's kind of like you know she has to work for them at this point and it's about her and her enemy from school becoming the primera and segunda to the most powerful son in this country and their a relationship kind of develops between the primera and the segunda in this story as they are stuck with this really horrible ass dude um in his like palace or whatever and it deals with rebellion it deals with love it deals with like queerness and relationships um it's just a beautiful wonderfully rendered fast-paced fantastical way and it's just so good the second book um i can't really explain without spoiling the plot and some key reveals in the first book but the second book we are following the perspective of the segunda from the first book and it is fantastic and amazing these two books are just so good this duology is amazing and oh if you want some queer sapphic feminist anti-capitalist revolutionary storytelling you gotta read this stuff because it is so good it is ya fantasy and gays read this book. The next book I have here is The Midnight Lie by Maria Rutkuski and this book is set in a fantasy world where it's like separated by class. Actually let me see what this book says about itself. Where Niram lives, crime abounds, a harsh tribunal rules, and society's pleasures are reserved for the high kith. Life in the ward is grim and punishing. People of her low status are forbidden from sampling sweets or wearing colors. You either follow the rules or pay a tithe and suffer the consequences. Niram keeps her head down and a dangerous secret close to her chest. But then she encounters Sid, a rakish traveler from far away who whispers rumors that the high kith possess magic. Sid tempts Niram to seek that magic for herself. But to do that, Niram must surrender her old life. She must place her trust in this sly stranger who asks above all not to be trusted this book obviously deals with these this class-based society there's some magic involved there's a sapphic romance and there is some intrigue and some family and some betrayal and it is just so mwah, chef's kiss wonderful i think that more people should read this book because it's a sapphic fantasy and it's so 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 good <laughs> magical reveals the plot reveals the plot twists whoa 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 <laughs> 
amazing. I think Marie Rakuski is kind of kind of a genius, a little bit of a genius for this one. The next book I have here is A Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthorst. This is about these two princesses who fall in love with each other because one of the princesses is betrothed to the other princess's brother, the prince, and one of the princesses is super prim, proper, very much a princess who's been trained her whole life to be a princess, but she has some secret magical powers. And the other princess is a stable girl. She wants to work with the horses. She wants to hang out with horses all day. All she wants to do is ride horses, okay? <laughs> so she's like a tomboy. And they develop this relationship in this fantasy world, in this magical kingdom, and it is beautiful to see play out. And it is wonderful and amazing and cool. And you, you should read this book if you haven't already. The next book I have on this list is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This has been talked about so much on booktube. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows about this already. It's about an alien invasion and the aftermath of it and the social media following that this girl gets off of this alien invasion basically. She is in a relationship with like her best friend who is also a woman and she is bisexual. Their relationship kind of falls apart due to this stuff that's happening around them and I think that since the main character is like casually bisexual and there is a casually queer relationship in this book people don't necessarily talk about the queerness of it but it is queer and I think we should talk about that I think that should be mentioned and people should recommend this book on the basis of it being pretty solid bisexual representation it deals with being in the public eye being bisexual and how that plays out and uh our main character kind of has to pretend that she's not bi, that she's just like a lesbian because she's in more of a public relationship with like her girlfriend at the time and she's like uh, the public doesn't really need to they don't know about that so <laughs> anyway yeah this book is just pretty solid it's a pretty solid sci-fi contemporary with more of a contemporary element of it than sci-fi I think and uh I think it's pretty good and you should read it if you're looking for a bisexual female main character led story. The next book on this list is Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills. This book is about the breakup of these two girls at this super fancy private school and kind of the aftermath of this breakup from the perspective of our main character who becomes friends with the really sour girl from that relationship breakup because they're putting on a Shakespeare show and she is the main character is like the only one who kind of gets Shakespeare <laughs> and she has to kind of explain the Shakespeare lines and stuff to a bunch of other cast members on this show and this just deals with like YA contemporary theater kid drama and it's just really solid I think in its representation of just gay teens <laughs> and the stuff that happens with it because our main character witnesses this dramatic breakup even though our main character I don't think is bisexual or lesbian she develops like a really strong friendship with one of the girls who is and helps her deal with um, a lot of that and this book doesn't necessarily talk a lot about the experiences of like homophobia and stuff within high school so it's like more of a good escapism read for that I think. It just kind of casually includes these queer relationships within the story. The next book I have on this young adult list is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This book follows a black gay main character who is Jamaican and Greek and he is discovering himself from a young age up until like college we follow this entire book um, following him and this book is written in verse so it's really short and easy to get through I think. We see his experiences coming out and figuring out his identity and figuring out his drag identity and him getting into drag performance and this is just a really sweet solid young adult contemporary read and if you like um I think this has been compared to Elizabeth Acevedo if you like Elizabeth Acevedo's works you should check this book out I think. Next up we have another River Solomon book and that is The Unkindness of Ghosts. This is a young adult sci-fi read set on a spaceship that is modeled after antebellum slavery and the different levels of this ship reflect the caste system of this world and we're following an autistic main character who 
I think she's queer and gender queer in some ways, and I think that that is the predominant uh, queer and trans representation in in this book, and I think that. It is just so well done, this main character's gender identity and the basis of it being explored, as well as just the entire plot of this book and the setting and just the world building and the conflict and the relationships, they're all so so strong. This is just such a good good book and I need more people to read it and I need more people to realize that it's a queer book, it's a queer trans book and you should pick it up. The next book I have here is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. George M. Johnson is a non-binary black journalist, activist, and writer and this is their memoir growing up as a queer black person in the south who joined a black fraternity in college and and this kind of explores their gender identity and sexuality and how they've come to terms with those things over the year as well uh, over the years over their lifetime as well as their relationships with friends and family in their life and how that's that's really sustained them throughout their entire life it also talks about like masculinity and the variations of it and how it's impacted their relationships with men in their life just a solid memoir and it's a young adult memoir too can't recommend this one enough the next book i have on this list is Darius the Great is Not Okay by Deeb Karam. This book is about an Iranian-American boy who goes to Iran with his family and he kind of has to figure out his issues because he suffers with depression and he is figuring out the parts of his identity that he just doesn't quite understand and this book is definitely young adult. It's pretty juvenile I think and uh, the queerness of this book and the queerness of our main character and him figuring out his gay identity isn't necessarily so like fleshed out. I think it's more about like the family and the relationships that he has and connecting with his culture and his identity and his past and I still think that it is a really solid young adult read even like middle grade even. You should check this book out if any of that seems interesting to you. The next book I have on this list is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is a fantasy heist story with a lesbian romance. We're following this main character who is an orphan girl, pickpocket type, and she figures out this magic system of this world, which is really cool. The romance, the plot, the heist plot line, it's all really solid and really good. And talking about this first book makes me really want to pick up the second book now. So yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think I, I need to go check out that book. So now we're finally into the graphic novel section of this video. So first I want to talk about Monstrous by Marjorie Liu. This has some lesbian characters in here and it's really dark. This book is about war and it's based off of the author's experiences with her grandparents having experienced war firsthand in China and I think that the art in this book is just so gorgeous and creepy and so much of the storyline and the plot is also creepy dark and horrifying but i there's just like something so queer about this whole story that i adore and love and it's a series i believe like it's a comic kind of series so this graphic novel isn't a standalone and i can't wait to get to the next book in this series it's just it's so good and beautiful and amazing the next graphic novel i have here is bury the lead by gabby Dunn, who is bisexual and the main character of this book is also bisexual. We're following this journalist, this young Asian American journalist and her older brother who like works for this campaign. I think some sort of mayoral campaign maybe and there's a really bloody murder that happens and this journalist intern is trying to figure out what the hell is going on. This book is a pretty solid like queer book I feel like. It incorporates those elements of you know being bisexual pretty casually throughout the story and it's definitely not the main focus of the story. The main focus of the story is like this murder and this job internship. I think it's a, just a solid comic. It's the art style is pretty um, standard in terms of comic style drawing. That's cool too. So check this book out if you're looking for some solid bisexual crime mystery journalism stuff. The last graphic novel I have here is The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. This is such a gorgeous book. Oh my god. Like the art of this book and the limited color palette of this book it's just mind-blowing how good it is. This is kind of a feminist meta 
retelling story. It kind of incorporates a lot of fables and myths and fairy tale kind of feelings into it and there are lesbian romances throughout this. It's basically about this maid who works for this woman who is married to some awful dude and that awful dude goes off for a hundred nights and this guy, this other awful dude, makes this bet with the husband being like, I'm gonna sleep with your wife within a hundred days and <laughs> so the maid and the wife kind of come up with the idea of telling him a story every night instead of sleeping with him <laughs> and it's just a really solid book it's like a book it's a story within stories within stories within stories and it's just so beautiful and so queer and lovely and amazing and ugh wonderful. Finally, I have three more books on this list of 50 queer books and these are all poetry books. Two of them are by Dinesh Smith, Homie, and Don't Call Us Dead. These are both poetry collections that are just so wonderful and explore black identity in America, being a gay man in America, queer identity and black identity, the experiences of the poet, and it's just a beautiful, these are just beautiful queer collections of just wonderful poetry. Last book I have on this list is The Tradition by Jericho Brown who is a black gay man who is HIV positive and this poetry collection explores kind of the poetic uh, elements of his life and his experiences and observations of the world and it's just a really gorgeous poetry collection and you should definitely check it out. I think this won the Pulitzer or something because it's just that good. Those are all 50 of my LGBTQ book recommendations. Please let me know if any of these books sound interesting to you. I know I've talked about a lot of these books in the past on my YouTube channel, uh, which you should subscribe to if you haven't already, by the way. But, you know, I... I just wanted to make a like a solid compiled list and once I read more LGBT books I will obviously make another video with more, even more recommendations but I hope you at least got a couple books that sound interesting to you that are just some gay and trans books that you think you're definitely gonna read sometime soon because these are all just so great and I want more people to read all of them. Check me out on Goodreads, Instagram, Twitter, those are always linked down below and you know like, comment, subscribe, all that stupid bullshit. <laughs> I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!